Welcome to this quick recap of the Star Wars Armada Vassal World Cup 2021 battle. This is the first semifinal game, and it was the number one seed, Gilad Paleon, facing off versus the number four seed, Real Veers, in an elimination match to play in the final. Both brought Imperial fleets to the table, so let's see how things looked before we started the battle. Our number one overall seed brought a revised version of his 2019 Nova winning list. His commander was Grand Admiral Thrawn on a decked out Kuat as the flagship. Uh, damage control officer, Darth Vader boarding team, ECM leading shots, expanded launchers, and Chimera with attached fleet support. Uh, supporting it was a Gladiator 1 class Star Destroyer with Captain Brunson, Ordnance Experts, Engine Techs, Assault Proton Torpedoes, and of course, Demolisher. Also, he had a Arkaton light cruiser with Captain Nita and Turbo Laser reroute circuits, and two Comsnet Kazantis, one with Hondo, and zero squadrons for 393 points, five deployments, and five activations. This is a fleet that wants to get in fast and furious and blow up whatever the opponent has before uh, it can be taken down itself and get the heck out. So. It's going to be interesting to see how it matches up against Real Veer's fleet. Let's take a look to see how GP got to the semifinal. GP's pod stage started with a 2 and 1 record. The single loss was to Comatose, which was a 175 to 279 loss. So that is the typo on the sheet here. Uh, I just don't have the time to go back and fix it, so you'll have to bear with me. The fighter coordination team Nebulon and Peltas was pushing a good amount of bombers and ultimately that was uh, was a hard time for GP. As you see, Rold also had a lot of bombers, um, and, well, I guess a good amount of hyenas, and I think he had some normal uh, aces as well mixed into that cis swarm. And uh, the double munificence pushing it was too much for GP, and I think Demolisher was kind of flying erratically due to the raid tokens. So ultimately it was a uh, a empty nest in terms of GP's kill record there but then uh, he got a concession against Alex and then when one big as he submarined his way up to the number one spot against unskilled first officer and the red scourge so if you notice here he won big pretty much every time he won so GP was able to secure a spot in the elimination phase of the Bass World Cup for a more in-depth look at Gilead Paleon's fleet and his path to the semifinal, please take a look at my Bass World Cup 2021 video. Now let's take a look at the number 4 seed, Real Veers. The German giant secured the 4th overall seed with Admiral Sloan as his commander and Hondo Onaka on a Raider 1 Corvette flagship, which was more of a lifeboat. And you'll see a Arkitson light cruiser supporting it with Captain Nita, Turbo Laser reroute circuits, and the Seticor type. Quasar 1 was the main fighting ship with Admiral Chirinu, Flight Controllers, Boosted Comms, and Squall. And then a Boosted Comms Gazanti and Captain Voldar Gazanti uh, supporting the three ships there. And then he had a full squadron complement of 134 points, making up Merrick Steel, Colonel Jendon, Mahler Mythil, Morello Evo, two Lambda Shuttles, Saber Squadron, and a Phantom. So this rounded up to 5 activations and 9 deployments and 399 points. Real Veers is only bringing 15 points of hull to the table and that indicates his reliance on his squadrons to win him the game. The Centicore title will let the Gazantes activate squadrons at safe distances as well as letting them avoid getting in the way of things. The Raider 1 lifeboat, well chances are is more of a sweeper well, more, does more cleanup work. And then the Quasar 1 has boosted comms, so that way the Quasar can stay at a distance. And that's in addition to the relay that the two Lambda shuttles and Colonel Jendon are bringing to the table, which will let the Centicore and the Quasar activate squadrons from beyond long range and let them stay at safety. And um, the Squall title will push the squadrons up as far as possible, so that way uh, those squadrons can then kite backwards and basically uh, make it a gauntlet of death as the uh, opposing fleet approaches uh, Real Veers' squishier fleet. So really, it's a tough fleet to fly against, even though there is a small amount of hull separating him from 
a complete um, wipage off the table. But five activations, nine deployments means it's hard to strategize and, and beat this guy in strategy. You're really going to have to fly a tight game and um, ultimately we'll see how this turns out for our number one overall seed, Gilad Paleon. Now let's take a look at Real Viers' path to the semifinal. Our number four seed actually had two losses in the pod phase. Uh, his pod must be really well adapted against his meta. Um, you know, as a German, he was in the European pod, so he ended up losing twice, five to six. But in fact, the margin of victory was so close in those matches that if you combine them, it was still would have been a five-six loss for Real Beers. Uh, Ten-one victory allowed him uh, to advance out of the pod phase with 20 points, and gave him some favorable matchups along the way uh, and where he faced mostly Americans it looks like and until he uh, qualified for the elimination phase. Interestingly enough his fourth Swiss phase match uh, was up against our number two seed Angry Ewok. So really really good wins here uh, along the way. Um, not huge wins but good wins and that was enough to get him qualified as a number four seed. If you want a more in-depth look at Real Veers' fleet or his path to the World Cup semifinal, please take a look at my World Cup semifinal preview video. And now let's take a look at objectives. Gilad Paleon with a six point bid chose first player. And Real Veers' objectives are as you'd expect with a Morello fleet, with targeting beacons, fire lanes, and sensor net. What these objectives are trying to do is put objective tokens on the board and use strategic and let Morello go to town. So ultimately, Gila Paleon chose targeting beacons. Now let's take a look at the battle. All right, so we joined the battle here in the middle of deployment with Real Veers uh, having second player and we're playing his targeting beacons. And uh, GP is first player. GP is deployed in a nice formation here because he only had five deployments. Whereas Real Veers' is nine deployments uh, provided him a lot more of, you know, tactical security. So um, he was able to deploy a little more safely and, um, you know, holding off his uh, prized vessels uh, until the end there. So you'll see Real Veers has his ships deployed at speed two, with the exception of the Lifeboat Raider. And um, it's a very passive deployment, as you know, this fleet does not want to engage directly. Um, as I mentioned in the uh, warm-up video uh, before this. So the squadrons go that uh, GP's Gazanti sends a Concentrate Fire token over to the Chimera. Um, and then that Gazanti that Real Veers activated sends over a Squadron token. This Gazanti sends a Repair token over to the Gladiator, uh, the Demolisher that is. And then this Gazanti that activates does not have ComsNet, so it kept its Navigate token and uh, moved to uh, that position there, and that's the most aggressive position we'll see <laughs> from Real Veers, really. Uh, so with the um, Arcton here, uh, we always thought this was interesting. Um, he's taken an outside path. Many people thought he might be kind of using it as more of a trailing ship, you know, get up to speed three and kind of flank in, uh, in behind the Quasar. Um, probably unlikely it could catch it, but, you know, try to still get up in there. And then um, he does use a navigate token or a command on both of those ships actually to actually resolve those movements. So the Camaro went up to speed three um, and uh, positioned itself there. And then the Demolisher went up to speed three as well. I personally think he might have should have done a inside turn uh, in the same direction, but you know just really keep that distance a little more, keep uh, and try to have the squadron stretch out to really reach it and avoid getting damaged on turn one because now when the squall is activating uh, it'll be able to push these lambdas around and let Morello go to town. So that's what we're seeing here is these lambdas activating and Morello doing some damage to the uh, we're not doing damage he actually missed these first two attacks. Okay, uh, he does. He pretty much does damage the entire game uh, until like his second or his last attack, really. So um, 
It's pretty uh, pretty strong performance from a dice perspective for Morello. Merrick Steel activates from the Squadron Command and Token on the Quasar. Uh, he uses the critical to reroll and look for an accuracy. He does not find it. He only finds eight hits instead. Um, and Morello rolls a hit crit here. Uh, <clears throat> Mauler rolls a hit. Uh, here comes the Phantom, actually, with a hit crit, and uses Brunson to uh, remove that uh, hit. And this causes Jendon in, and Real Beers was looking for the big hit here and did not find it. He actually only got a blink and a blink, funnily enough. So um, that, that Phantom pretty much only hit once all game, actually. Uh, really interesting. So now that these uh, Lambdas are act doing their actual, actual activations, um, for the turn, uh, the, the, uh, land, uh, Morello is able just to go to town here on the Demolisher and really just, you know, just gets consistently one damage. I apologize for the pop-up there. Um, you know, n n life never goes as planned. Anyways, we have, uh, here, first major damage already, uh, with the, the Demolisher losing its front and left side shields and already going down to one hull. GP's damage deck was bugged, so um, we uh, used the honor system here from him. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's a beauty of the game of Armada. The community is so great. Uh, you know, you can I, I trust the average player, right? To to be honest with what their criticals were. In this case. Um, and it is also the testament of how annoying Dassel is in the most strange and uh, inconvenient ways where the damage deck can bug out. So uh, Chimera swaps out uh, Entrapment Formation for Intensify Firepower and activates it. And then um, the Demolisher will uh, reveal a command here, I believe, as the first activation. Yep, it's got to navigate. He uh, revealed a Concentrate Fire with Thrawn. Uh, he misses the long range attack. Um, and sets it to a hit, though. Um, so he just evaded it. And now he rolls up with the second attack. He needed seven damage, and he got six after Ordnance Experts and Concentrate Fire. So, um, <clears throat> rough time here, because the critical was point defense failure. So even uh, Assault Proton Torpedoes was not helpful, really, for... Um, GP, but the Demolisher does get a engine tax movement to bump the uh, Arkansan and, and the and uses a and used a repair token as well to to get that shield value up on the front hull zone there. So um, the Arkansan is at one hull, unfortunately for GP. Uh, I think he really wanted to, to shoot that bad boy down, and then maybe uh, you know kind of quick pivot with the Chimera or um, something you know and pinch in on that Raider. I think that was the plan. I really just snipe that Arcaton. It's a trade down, right? But really, it he can't. He couldn't really do much, you know. Uh, he had to come up with the plan on the fly because he was so out deployed. Um. So yeah, that trade down, and then he could, you know, move everything else to safety, where Squall won't be pushing those lambdas anymore and then you know just go and win the uh, raider or the gazantes with the kuat and uh, you know win the points battle that way anyways um so uh he just a few more like small movements here you know really just passing activation right this Qua this Gazanti actually passed the token over to the quasar instead of activating squadrons um i mean the centicore title is on that architon so it would have been fine right to activate two squadrons but anywho uh the architon rolls three damage up against the uh, demolisher on the front arc and then the side arc does two and he sets that one to a crit with the uh, TRC um, and then um, evade doesn't help him really and he got life support failure so he the demolisher can't hold any command tokens that's worthless because it's at one hole now 
And really, I, uh, when we were recording um, and commentating, we thought it was a strange move uh, that the Arcton's attacking, but uh, I think we forgot that the Quasar actually has the Demolisher in range at the moment, and double Arct, actually. So, it, with that targeting beacon right there, it's fine. That's five blue dice <laughs> with four rerolls, I believe, uh, off two attacks. It, and only one hull, really, to contend with. You know, that, that's, that's going to be dead. So, um... Anyways, uh, these squadrons start going to town now on uh, the Chimera instead of the Demolisher, which again I thought was a little greedy and the commentary, but um, you know, upon review it was actually a really smart move, and that's why he's a top four player and I'm not. Um, and really Morello Mythal. Morello is just dealing consistent, consistent damage to this uh, um, full-blown uh, all these capital ships here because he's just punishing it uh, one damage at a time. You see, just one damage, one damage, and it's just he can't even brace it. It's not even missing except for the Phantom. The Phantom is the only thing that was missing. It did one damage, which got Brunsoned away at the beginning and just kept missing. <laughs> Um, yep, so, uh, the redirect disappeared due to Sloan, off Jendon, Jendon's, or off Merrick, Jendon double, or Merrick double taps there, and then the Quasar finished off the, uh, Demolisher, and scooted along at speed 2 there. Now, um, Manticore is already at 8 hull at the top of round 3. Really, really tough here for uh, GP. Like that Arcton on the far left is so out there, I can't even actually see it because uh, I have it covered up with the uh, fleet name. And um, <clears throat> now that we're starting round three, uh, concentrate fire. And a navigate there on the uh, Star Destroyer doesn't deal enough damage to finish off the Arkitson, uh, but he does ping for one on the left side there against the Quasar and was able to ram the Arkitson to death to secure the 66 points, but he really ended up in a spot he doesn't want to be in to do so. Um, uh, uh, so he's, at, he's already at a 25 point deficit here, and his ship is flying into the the meat grinder. Uh, so Squall is activating and using it, its ability to just use Morello just to kill this poor, poor Star Destroyer. Um, so already before uh, really anything else happens, it uh, it's just chewing it away. Um, again, this is kind of the story of the game here, uh, with GP just kind of watching his, um, his shields and hull just wither away to all these squadrons. Uh, you know, Morello is getting so many extra attacks off Squall and, um, you know, the strategic activations there. So, really, really fun time for GP because he did not bring any squadrons whatsoever. Uh, so this was a rare miss uh, from the squadrons. Um, Ginkgo rolls, shots here, and a, another miss. So, um, like I said, the Phantom was named Ginkapo, uh, to uh, which was funny in, in and of itself. But um, it was even funnier with when that fact it, it could not hit the broadside of a Star Destroyer. <laughs> Um, but already, uh, the Star Destroyer is only already at three hull, um, you know, at the end of round three, without even getting shot by a ship. Like, that's crazy. Um, Ma Merrick Steel uh, caused the, the Chimera to discard its um, contain. Brace there, and really, um, and I apologize if you're confused by me interchanging Chimera and Manticore. Um, 
GP had named his chimera in Vassal the Manticore, so um, I, was, I refer to that uh, generally when I'm speaking, because that's the actual name of the vessel there, but the title on the ship is the Chimera. Uh, taking a short little break here in the middle of round three, you know, seventh inning stretch. You know, stand up, grab yourself uh, something to drink um, <clears throat> as we watch the rest of the carnage unfold. Uh, this is, again, a shorter battle because of um, print and fleet composition. Really, GP didn't have any squadrons to fiddle around with, so real viewers kind of just didn't have too much to think about on that side of things. So the Gazanti that just activated on Virus' side actually had a squadron command, but it couldn't use it because it was relying on Sensicore to activate those squadrons. So now the Chimera is at one hole at the end of round three here with Morello, uh, pretty much at the end of the ship phase here of round three with Morello still to go. Those last two squadrons activated thanks to Relay. Um, and yeah, uh, so this Gazanti goes in, and it's going to get pinged, and rammed. I think he missed on the double wire, but uh, I think he was trying to just, no, I'm not sure. Maybe he thought he had it, maybe not. Um, maybe we'll stay outside here. There, swing outside with the arc of 10, right? Set up, I think, a double arc. But the raider is still yet to go because the demolisher died. Pings the... Uh, Gazanti there, and then parks beautifully in that front hall zone of the uh, the Arcaton. Morello activates, and actually a rare miss, allowing Chimera to survive despite having only one hall. Now we're in round four. <clears throat> Intensify Firepower was discarded because the is at one hull. There's no point in feeding any more tokens. And it goes for a last gasp attack. Long range is where that Quasar wants to be. Um, so it can't really get hit with any lethal damage unless it's a bonkers roll, right? You know, uh, even then. I think it would have been fine. You know, like three reds, double hits, and accuracy. And it goes for the ram, and it dies. Do some quick math to get the score updated for you all. It's 278 to 66 now that the Chimera is gone. And then the flagship lifeboat activates and puts that uh, Arcaton at one hole. And, um,. We call the game there. Uh, so, really what it is, is, um, since, uh, that turn there at speed 2 would have killed, I don't know. I don't know why they called it exactly, but um, you know they, they did call the game. And now here's GP rolling for extra. If you want to see the full commentary, please do check out the uh, Steel Strategy YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, I will upload my own full version just for posterity, but please note OBS was using the wrong microphone, so my audio quality will be better on the Steel Strategy. Uh, 
recording, but I have a little bit better graphics and um, as well as a higher video quality, so if that's something that matters to you, please do check it out. Uh, this is GP revealing his objectives, most wanted planetary ion cannon and solar corona. Real viewers would have chosen solar corona, or sorry, uh, planetary ion cannon, because, uh, you know, obviously those objective tokens, he can move around. Anyways, once again, thank you for watching. Um, please do subscribe. I will have the final recorded uh, and um, uploaded to YouTube uh, soon after the battle occurs. Thank you.